up next, we have Dr. Hay. Um, Dr. Hay is the John T. Wilson Distinguished Service Professor in the Department of Chemistry and Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at the University of Chicago. His research spans a broad range of fields, including chemical biology, RNA biology, epigenetics, biochemistry, and genomics. His work is foundational to developing potential therapies that target RNA methylation effectors against human diseases such as cancer. So please walk, welcome Dr. Hay with the University of Chicago. All right, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, today I'm going to introduce epigenetic biomarker discovery uh, from plasma cell-free DNA. So this is a project that we've been working with Dr. Turaga uh, from University of Chicago. Dr. Toroga is a physician um, uh, really uh, working on parental neo metastasis. This metastasis can come from colorectal cancer, appendix cancer, or ovarian cancer. And uh, whenever you have this cancer from primary uh, tumor site, uh, they can uh, spread to parental neo. And there uh, we need biomarkers for diagnosis, prognosis. And importantly, after surgery, uh, we need the biomarker to monitor reoccurrence. Uh, the early we can monitor the reoccurrence, the better chance for a patient to survive. And the current biomarkers, but as you can say, they, they don't really work that well. Uh, they're good, but um, not ideal. And our hope is to discover and, and apply uh, more accurate or more sort of uh, sensitive epigenetic biomarkers. The program is built upon a previous discovery made in my laboratory that uh, we figure out a way to label uh, hydroxyl muscle C on DNA with biotin. So this enable us to um, enrich and uh, globally mapping hydroxyl muscle C, uh, a sort of a, a very interesting epigenetic biomarker from a genomic DNA, from fresh FFP tissues, or importantly, from circulating cell-free DNA directly from uh, blood and plasma. We've showed that previously, this is actually a, a work we published last year um, in which we did 19 human tissues. We mapped hydroxyl muscle C from genomic DNA isolated from human tissue. And this uh, uh, results really showed you that uh, these hydroxyl muscle C biomarkers are very good at differentiating different tissue types. And importantly, we build this a whole body human tissue map. So whenever we see a hydroxyl muscle C signature from tissue or from uh, blood, we know exactly where it comes from. So uh, this is sort of a, 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 a figure to show you that there are these uh, hydroxyl muscle C modified uh, uh, genes that are very much tissue specific. So to extend the study, uh, uh, we also try to uh, work on the cell-free DNA. So these are DNAs coming from different tissues, cell die. They re release this DNA into the uh, blood and uh, we can use a few meals of blood to capture this DNA, perform the sequencing method. We know exactly where uh, the cell-free DNA come from, which tissue, and importantly, if it comes from tumor, and uh, we can detect that at the early event. So again, as I said, this is really a, a collaboration between many labs. Uh, Dr. Turoga's lab drive the entire thing, Mark Bissane, colorectal uh, uh, cancer physician, Dr. Vijan from Northwestern, our bioinformatics, biostatistics expert, and my own lab, uh, we provided the method and execute experiments. And there are many, many researchers and clinical side uh, involved, have been involved in this work. Uh, this is a preliminary pilot study uh, we were excited about. Uh, so here we can look at the parental neomatastasis versus control, and we can also look at the parental neomatastasis from different uh, tumor sites. And we can clearly say we can separate these groups uh, uh, with hydroxyl methyl C biomarkers. So we're confident. This gives us the confidence to move on with this project. So Dr. Churuga's uh, laboratory collected uh, in, over the last uh, couple of years, 226 samples with different um, uh, um, categories. Uh, and we uh, came in to isolate the cell-free DNA and perform the sequencing. And we're in the process of uh, performing analysis. And I, I have to say that the, the pandemic has caused a major delay and the interruption of this. And unfortunately, we're, uh, we're back and we're, we're trying to move this forward. With this 226 sample and analyzed, we think we have a baseline to move on to clinical trials. And indeed, we're currently 
uh, in the process of Dr. Turuga's laboratory uh, are in the process of uh, collecting samples from um, uh, for future uh, clinical biomarker discovery. We uh, not only have this uh, perennial metastasis detection, um, but also after surgery, uh, they're collecting at different time points to really provide a sensitive marker to monitor perennial metastasis reoccurrence. As I said, this is a, yeah, a critical factor. If you can capture recurrence early, uh, the likelihood uh, to treat the patient is, is just much higher. In addition to hydroxyl muscle C, uh, DNA methylation is also a well-known biomarker. You probably heard uh, news from Guerrero, the exact science. DNA methylation and hydroxyl methylation are sort of complementary to each other. DNA methylation is more stable, easier to detect. Uh, however, the uh, problem has been that you need a large amount of DNA in order to detect the DNA methylation, just because the method, the so-called bisulfide sequencing, leads to a lot of degradation of DNA. So you typically need 10, 20 mils of blood. Uh, we recently de uh, um, uh, developed this new method we call a linear amplification-based bisulfide sequencing, or LabSeq, uh, which uh, has um, 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 unprecedented sensitivity and the comprehensiveness in terms of 5 muscle C mapping from genomic DNA or cell-free DNA. Uh, here's the um, procedure. Uh, we basically take a cell-free DNA, a fragmented genomic DNA, and then we uh, put a T7 adapter. So what this means is uh, later on, after bisulfide treatment, we produce RNA first. So this is the linear application to produce RNA first. And from this RNA, we then produce DNA. Now, this step avoids the exponential amplification. So uh, the linear amplification best keep the, um, the original information. Uh, so this method is base resolution, whole genome, unbiased, and the most importantly, uh, we only require a nanogram or less. Um, the traditional methods require something like a 20 nanogram in order to get a comprehensive information. And as you guys know, if you draw 20 mil of blood, it's, it's just not, uh, as uh, friendly uh, to the patients as well as to the physicians. In this particular case, we don't even need a one meal of blood. This is sort of the results. To compare two commercial uh, kits, these are 5 muscle C bisulfide sequencing kits you can buy from commercial vendors. This is our LabSeq uh, results. As you can see that when we drop to 100 picogram, we still have very good uh, uh, genome coverage. That means we can still cover a large amount of human genome, but then with commercial method, you don't see anything in the green one, right? This is probably a more direct way to view this. This is just that we pick the uh, a part of the genome uh, to show you the coverage. Each of these lines is just a, a one data point. Now with commercial method, if you use 100 nanogram, you get very good gen uh, genome coverage, okay? This is considered a very good data. But if you go down to one nanogram, you, you see very sparse coverage. Most of the signals are gone, right? If you go to 100 picogram, you, you barely see anything. This is another commercial kit. Again, at one nanogram, you have the sparse coverage of the human genome. Now look at our lab sick. This is the real results. One nanogram coverage is even better than the 100 nanogram from this commercial kit, right? We can drop down to 100 picogram, we still keep pretty decent coverage. And right now we use 500 picogram to one nanogram, which is roughly half mil blood or less. So this is a really, we believe a, 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 a most friendly way for us to uncover fine muscle C biomarkers. And we're going to apply this to uh, all the samples we collected so far. I want to finish, I know this is appendix cancer, uh, um, uh, group. So I want to just uh, say that uh, we also have done pilot studies to look at the colon arranging versus appendix arranging. So with appendix cancer, uh, when it's metastasis to parenteal, we can uh, easily or readily separate from other and from healthy controls. So whatever we learned uh, during this process can be readily applied to the appendix cancer and, and we're collecting those samples at the moment. So that's it. I want to thank you for this opportunity again.